Hey friends, welcome to the OT Minute. My name's Arno, and in today's video, we wanna talk about reflexes that integrate throughout the lifespan. We've talked previously about reflexes that uh, persist throughout life, and there are very important reflexes that we use on a daily basis. However, these are reflexes that tend to be uh, present at the time of birth and tend to integrate or fade throughout that first year. Now we'll talk specifically about how to test the, for these reflexes uh, and I'll try to show you some videos that um, is hopefully clear that you can be able to see how do we test these. And then we also want to talk about a little bit about the purpose of these reflexes and what are some of the um, things that it does for an infant but also maybe some ways where it might be troublesome if it persists. For example, if you're working with kids who are older but um, who have some of these reflexes, you might notice uh, ways in which it is impeding function. So again, this will be kind of a quick review, but we'll try to touch on some things that is ho hopefully be helpful if you're studying for the NBCOT board exam or for um, just a test, or if you're trying to uh, incorporate the testing of these reflexes in your daily practice. So to begin, let's talk about the rooting reflex. The rooting reflex is an important reflex that generally can be as have an onset as early as 28 weeks of gestation and integrates usually around three months. Now, the rooting reflex uh, can be easily tested by touching the side of the face or around the mouth, whether it's the upper lip or lower lip, and seeing if the baby turns towards that source of touch. Now, the purpose of this rooting reflex is really to help in the feeding process initially, but it also helps to strengthen the neck muscles and will eventually lead to improved head, head movement and voluntary control over exploring uh, uh, their environment and objects in their environment. So it's gonna be really important for this to initially create some strength, but also eventually to fade to allow for more voluntary control of head movement. Next, let's talk about the sucking swallowing reflex. The onset is gonna be similar at about 28 weeks of gestation, so it should be present at full term birth, and then it integrates at about two to five months. To test for this, you can put your finger or a pacifier in the baby's mouth or somewhere in the oral cavity. And what should happen is that the baby should close their mouth around the pacifier or finger and then should start sucking and swallowing. And so this would be helpful for, for example, if the baby needs to take a bottle of milk or is placed on the breast for feeding. This reflex should take over once something touches usually the roof or inside of the oral cavity. As you can imagine, if this reflex persists and doesn't integrate, it could lead to issues with self-feeding and coordinating, sucking and swallowing, particularly as we're getting into more uh, or different types of food groups. Next, we have the moral reflex, which generally is present at about 28 weeks of gestation and integrates at about four to six months. Now this reflex is a protective reflex that can be elicited by bringing the head of the baby back about 30 degrees. And what should happen is there should be kind of two phases. One phase is going to be where extensor tone kicks in, arms swing out, legs extend. And then the second phase is gonna be a flexion phase where the arms come in and the legs come in as well. Now if the moral reflex doesn't integrate uh, within its usual time frame, what may happen is there may be difficulty with head control uh, or protective reactions. And so there will be potentially functional uh, deficits that result because the moral reflex continues to be present. All right, next let's talk about the Palmer reflex. This is generally present at about 37 weeks of gestation, so, so should be present at uh, full term birth and then should integrate between four to six months. Now the palmar reflex is easy to test for. All that's done is a finger is placed inside the palm of an infant's hand. One of the resources that I use made a note to put it on the ulnar side of the hand. Keep that in mind in case you're testing it and you're not getting the full reflex elicited. But the idea is you put the finger in the palm of the hand and then the fingers flex and close around the finger. Now as with many reflexes, just by eliciting that flexion in the hand, we're helping to strengthen the hand muscles, but also so keep in mind if this doesn't go away over time, issues are going to arise where a person's having difficulty releasing objects or instead of keeping a, a, a flat palm, they're curling in their fingers when something touches the palm of their hand. Next we have the plantar grasp. The plantar grasp is similar in some ways to the palmar grasp and can be easily memorized together because this is elicited in a similar way. However, here we're applying pressure to the bottom of the foot, so to the plantar side of the foot. And what happens when we apply pressure there, you can do it with your thumb or finger, is the toes should curl around the finger 
finger or there should be flexion of the toes. Now difficulty with this integrating will lead to issues where you know anytime that the bottom of the foot is touched that reflex is elicited and so this would make things like putting on shoes difficult, it may make walking difficult, you may see some toe walking. Next we have the neonatal positive support or primary standing reflex. This is not one that I have a specific onset for other than at birth. However, it should integrate around one to two months. Now to test this, what you'll wanna do is to kind of bounce a child up and down on their feet to see if a lower extremity extensor tone kicks in. And what you should also see is some plantar flexion. Now if this neonatal primary standing or upright primary standing reflex doesn't integrate, what can happen is there's gonna be issues with walking that can include toe walking as well because that reflex continues to cause extensor tone and plantar flexion. Next, we have the traction reflex. The traction reflex has an onset of about 28 weeks of gestation and integrates at about two to five months of that first year of life. Now to test for this, you can pull on the baby's forearms and it should elicit flexor tone in both the hands and the upper extremity. So it's helping to strengthen the hands and the flexors of the upper extremity. Next, we have the asymmetric tonic neck reflex, which has an onset of about 37 weeks of gestation and integrates between four to six months. Now to test this reflex, you'll have a baby in supine and you will turn the head to one side or the other. And you'll hold it there for a few seconds. What should happen is that limbs in the direction of the face or where the face is looking should extend and then the limbs on the side of the back of the head should flex. And so that includes the lower extremity and the upper extremity of that side. And this can be tested both directions. Now early on in life, this helps to uh, prevent rolling, but also helps to strengthen those muscles that are being elicited and also helps with visual attention to the extremity that is being looked at. Now, if the ATNR doesn't integrate well over the lifespan, there can be difficulty with a range of activities. This can include um, dynamic grasping, dynamic gross motor activities, really anything where a child um, has to look in their environment while using both or one upper extremity in a way that is incongruent with the ATNR. Finally, let's talk about the gallant reflex. This is generally present at about 32 weeks of gestation and integrates at about two months. So it integrates pretty early on, but this can be tested by having the baby on their belly and using a finger to gently scratch one side of the spine to see if there's some lateral flexion of the trunk that occurs. And this can be tested on both sides. One of the benefits of the gallant reflex uh, is that with time, as that reflex is elicited, there's gonna be strengthening of lateral flexion of the trunk, which is gonna be really important for rolling and eventually crawling. Now again, it's going to cause trouble in the long haul if it doesn't integrate, uh, but in the short term, it's really helpful for the infant as they're gaining some trunk strength and flexibility. Well, I hope that was helpful information. If you did find it helpful, please take a second and click the like button down below or drop a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And then if you want more OT related content, just like this, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, which lets you know when new videos are coming out on this channel. Uh, and then finally, I uh, have some links down below, usually with some resources, references, discounts, uh, anything else that I can find uh, for my audience that might be helpful. So feel free to check that out. And with that being said, have a wonderful occupation filled day and I'll see you in the next video.